Welcome to this edition of the Great Ideas for Teaching Science video series. We've seen in this series how the three-dimensional classroom not only requires students to master content, but the development of science skills and the ability to make connections across science domains. We want to not only assess what they know, but what they can do and how they think. But how do we know that they got it? How can we measure mastery three-dimensionally? When many hear the word assessment, they instantly visualize a paper-pencil test. In an effective, three-dimensionally focused science classroom, teachers implement a balanced assessment system containing a variety of formative, informal, and summative measurements of learning. When implementing a balanced assessment system in my own classroom, each type of assessment has a role to play in enhancing and driving student learning. So let's explore the different ways of evaluating achievement in our science classrooms. When introducing a new topic to my students, it's important to take a quick formative survey of where they are with regard to the content at hand. One way to do this is to use diagnostic pre-post tests, such as those found within Elevate Science. These assessments can be given both at the beginning and the end of learning, allowing for the collection of quantitative growth data. But it's also important to collect qualitative and anecdotal data when introducing a new concept. It helps to unveil misconceptions and preconceptions my students might have around the topic. Several years ago, I asked my sixth graders to answer the question, what is mass, in their science notebooks. In quickly reviewing their responses, most of my students answered the questions correctly, but I noticed one kiddo wrote, it's where we go on Sunday. I thought, you're not wrong. But thanks to that quick pre-assessment, I was able to steer the student in the right direction with our whole class discussion. Within Elevate Science, students are gonna be asked similar simple questions to kick off a new topic. They begin with an informal pre-assessment task by observing an engaging visual that brings the content focus to life. A question centered around this visual asks students to show what they know. This requires students to observe the phenomenon presented. What can they see? What questions do they have? Can they make predictions about what they're gonna learn? Most importantly for you as the teacher, this provides an informal pre-assessment that allows you to put your finger on the pulse of what your students know. It empowers you with the necessary information to make those initial instructional decisions. To monitor student progress in learning in the middle of a topic or chapter, formative and summative assessments are crucial. My classroom is filled with different learners at different stages in their learning journey, and it's my job to assess along the way to create the most personalized path possible for my students. Within Realize, teachers have a section dedicated to data collection and analysis. This data is collected when students complete lesson quizzes and topic tests digitally, much like the diagnostic pre-post assessment we reviewed earlier. These auto-graded assessments give immediate feedback to both students and teachers. It allows teachers to analyze content mastery by standard, question analysis, individual student analysis, as well as assigning additional activities based on mastery. This allows for immediate database differentiation. Not all formative and summative assessments need to be given in the form of quizzes or tests. Evidence-based and performance-based assessments are a great way to evaluate three-dimensionally. Within Elevate, when completing an evidence-based assessment, students are given a problem to solve. Students use what they've learned over the course of a topic to answer questions related to the disciplinary core ideas, the science and engineering practices, and the cross-cutting concepts. How can you differentiate immediately using your own observations while teaching? I've found that scaffolded questioning can be used to help move students progressively towards stronger understanding and ultimately greater independence of the learning process. Elevate provides teachers with point of view scaffolded questions for effective implementation of this differentiation technique. These are complete with DOK levels and example answers. But what about implementing an evaluation that focuses on the doing of science? Performance-based assessments are a proven way to assess a student's ability to apply skills and concepts learned during a unit of study. You Demonstrate Labs, found at the end of each topic in Elevate Science, provide students the opportunity to plan an investigation, collect data, and analyze that data to determine whether or not their initial claim or hypothesis was supported. Rubrics are also provided to help guide and assess student work. Each and every day, our classrooms are filled with learning opportunities to provide informal feedback of student learning. These informal assessments can take many different forms and promote student responsibility of learning. Teachers using Elevate Science are provided with a lush library of activities to make these informal assessments. You Investigate Labs allow students to participate in the practice of science before being more formally evaluated in the performance-based assessment. Students also have the opportunity to test claims, 
manipulate variables, and retest possible solutions digitally through Elevate's virtual labs. And teachers can teach and assess science literacy skills by implementing the claim evidence reasoning framework. As we've mentioned several times during this video series, science is about doing, but science is also about solving. Students retain information longer, make stronger connections, and reach a higher depth of knowledge by solving problems. It also addresses that dreaded question of why do we have to learn this? Problem-based learning provides an authentic learning experience, connecting the scientific concept to real-world situations. In Elevate Science, students can solve problems through the quests, which are presented at the beginning of each topic. Throughout each lesson, students gain more knowledge and skills to help them reach the final goal of the quest findings. They integrate what they've learned at the end of the topic to produce a product, such as a presentation, video, or a webcast. Or they determine numerous design solutions, choose the best solution, and then build, test, and redesign. Each task can be assessed separately to determine a student's proficiency in individual dimensions. The final product can be assessed to determine students' ability to integrate the three dimensions in a specific concept. Quest allows students to reflect on and update their ideas as they learn more about the phenomenon they are studying. And because students apply information in each lesson to a specific problem in the Quest, each component of the Quest not only provides assessment opportunities, but also engages students in real-world connections. Quest supports students' long-term retention of core ideas, science skills, and provides a storyline for them to make connections. Thanks so much for joining me to explore different ways to evaluate student achievement in our science classrooms. If you're interested in more of our gift series, check out the links to other videos.